I'm absolutely delighted to have been invited here at Whips Cross, not least because I have my own memories, if you want, about Whips Cross. My mum was a nurse here in training between 1939 and 1944. And secondly, my successor as General Secretary of Unison, Dave Prentice, was nursed back to health here after a major operation. So uh, I'm really pleased to be here. Now President of the National Pensioners Convention, Rodney told me that it's a bit like a union for the retired. The Pensions Convention is the pensioners. We are the older people, so we're not the professionals. We're the older people, and uh, it's us banding together to campaign for all the things that we think older people need. And I say, again, respect societally. There isn't a lot of respect for older people. I don't suppose there was a golden age when there was reverence for white-haired people, but um, I think over these last 40, 50 years, perhaps some of the respect has slipped, and we've got to put that back. Rodney is best remembered as the leader of Unison. What was his greatest achievement when he led this health and public service union? The two things that I really wanted, that I set out for, was to build one public service union. We merged three unions just over ten years ago. That, I think, is significant. I played my part in that, not all down to me. And the second thing, which uh, I like to think I will be remembered for, is for the pressure that I kept on to have a, a statutory national minimum wage below which nobody would be exploited and we haven't got the best one in the world but we've got a national minimum wage now and I like to think that I made some little contribution in that area. Now, as the president of the National Pensioners Convention, Rodney Bickerstaff has a new challenge ahead. My task at the moment, as long as I'm the president of the Pensions Convention, is to try and get a big increase in the basic state pension and then have it linked to average earnings so that older people who use this hospital, who use all the hospitals and social services in the country, do it from a position of reasonable strength in financial terms, that they aren't uh, penny grubbers. They're not people who are being told to jump through hoops. Older people don't like this image of themselves. They don't look for the moon and the stars, but they do want something decent in their sunset years. And I think the dignity of a reasonable income in this, the fourth strongest economy in the world, is something that we can easily achieve. We are a rich, rich country. If I might, one last thing. September the 11th, a bad day, 2001, bad day for the planet. Two and a half thousand people died in Washington in the Twin Towers disaster and of course uh, in New York. Uh, uh, I mean the, the fact is that uh, that winter not two and a half thousand people, 22,000 old British people died unnecessarily of cold related illnesses. Where is the war against pensioner poverty and fuel poverty that would eradicate those sort of deaths? And finally Rodney reminds us that it isn't all bad being an older person. Oh, the best thing about being an older person, well, it isn't now that young people stand up and give you a seat on the tube or on the buses, because that's, <laughs> that's long gone. The age of chivalry uh, is long past us. The best thing, I suppose, is if you can look back. They say, as you get older, whatever you've done, it's all tales in old age, it's all just stories, is that if people can look back and think that, A, they made a contribution to their family, to their community, or to society, or to all three, secondly, that they've loved and they've been loved, and thirdly, they can say, well, now I'm old, I'm able to pass on a little bit of that wisdom, a little bit of that experience to younger people, because uh, I say you're only here once.